Hey everyone, Wayne Fox. Sorry, been absent a little bit. I haven't been making as many videos. Trying to kind of decide what to do with my channel. I guess for now I'll just keep making videos about things that interest me. Uh, kind of have five or six overall topics and I kind of try to organize those into playlists. Everything from copyright and I am working on a video that tries to kind of give us a basic understanding of what the case act is all about and what it might do and what the timing is and how it might affect photographers but anyway this video is about these little thunderbolt 3 cases that i've uh, built a couple of these uh, thunderbolt 3 drives from my computer yeah first one i reviewed was this fledging case and i call it fledgling in the video and uh, one of my subscribers or my commenters pointed out that it's actually fledging there's no l in it thank you uh, and then I also took a look at this one that's called a TechQ Cube, which is a little less expensive. One thing you'll notice is that they both use the exact same circuit board. So what they're doing is they're sourcing a circuit board from somebody that's making a, a Thunderbolt 3 compatible board, and they're just building a case around it. And no problem with that. I think there's four or five companies that are using the exact same circuit board. And I was fine with this. It was working great. The nice thing about this one is it's active cooled, little fan in there that that keeps things cool. Now, the SSD itself uh, actually runs better when it's hot, so you don't want to keep it too cool. Uh, the controller chip is the one that, you know, if it gets hot, it'll slow everything down. But what they typically do, especially on these Sabrent devices, is that they have a copper strip which conducts the heat from the controller chip and transfers it over to the uh, memory chips. Now, those are designed to run hot, and in fact, if they don't run hot that'll wear the chip out faster and I don't understand the science behind it but I guess something in the bit swapping where it flips from zero to one in there whatever it does uh, heat makes it work better anyway the reason for the video is recently I noticed that OWC came out with a small case as well where you can again make your own SSD uh, external SSD th Thunderbolt 3 device uh, holds a standard full-size M.2 SSD uh, it won't hold the shorter ones, uh, not many of those around anyway. And it's quite a bit cheaper. Uh, these, I, I'll check the price. When I did this one, it was like $150, and this one was a little more. And the this one is like $70. Now, that's still quite a bit more than one that is designed for USB 3. And those actually work pretty good as well. Most of the time, you won't get as good a speed out of them. But uh, the reason I decided to try it is because OWC's reputation for Thunderbolt devices is pretty stellar. They've been pretty inventive over the years. And if you notice, if I pull the case off, that this is not the same circuit board. They have engineered and had their own circuit board built. Uh, the controller chips are a little different in it. And the one thing that's quite different, if you buy an SSD that has uh, double-sided, I'll throw a close-up up in the corner somewhere, so that there are chips on the bottom as well, then these devices can run into trouble. There's a component on this board. Let me get that off. There's a little component on this board right here that sticks up just enough that if you have uh, the backside has full SSDs, it's going to hit and you're going to actually have to flex the and bend that and curve it a little bit. And of course, that's going to dig into that. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little worn spot on this SSD. I might actually do a close up to show that where it's been pressured against that. And it seems to be okay. I've had this for over a year now, and I don't use it a ton. I haven't been traveling as much, and that's the main purpose for this. Hopefully, I have my vaccine now, so hopefully the road will uh, be more available to me and I can get out on the road. Anyway, this one uh, has plenty of room. I have no problem with clearance. These chips here are low enough in relationship to where the device mounts. And so... Uh, really uh, well-designed board. The other thing I'll mention about this, you'll notice that when I have the uh, case on it, that the cable is looks like it's permanent and it's actually gripped very well, it's designed. But once you take it apart, you realize if you happen to do something to your cable, you know, maybe you mash this end or it crimps and breaks, you'll notice that it's just a normal cable and it's plugged into the circuit board. So if you took these other three screws out, you could take the whole circuit board out change out that cable and put a new one in. Whereas some of the devices, like one that I bought from OWC, that cable is, I don't know if you can take it apart or not, I've never done it. <clears throat> but you know, at least it's not built onto the board. So anyway, let's put this together and we'll run some speed tests on it. 
So this is my Sabrent 4 terabyte device. It's a uh, PCI compatible, 3 compatible device. I do have one of these that's a 4.0, which is will be compatible with PCI 4.0 if that ever transfers into Thunderbolt 4 or 5 or whatever. Or internally, if I have a PCI 4 computer, which I assume that the next generation of most computers will become that. Anyway, the little screw that it that holds it in is really small and be careful if you're like me I have a glass desktop and if I drop it uh, I'd have no idea where it's gonna end up it could take me hours to find it and in fact I dropped one not long ago and I never found it but fortunately uh, I'm gonna keep it a little bit further away from my edge of my desk to try to do this and we'll put that in there and it almost went to the floor again uh, it's kind of a trick to balance that screw on there and if you basically have to hold it upside down and then you can kind of put it in and once you start it turning then it goes in pretty good I don't know uh, obviously some people are better at this than me uh, we'll turn that on now what we're gonna do is put the top on this and then I'm gonna plug it in and set my computer up to start uh, recording the screen and let's just run some speed tests on this and I'll, I'll put it in this one and run the same test I don't think we'll see more speed, but we might see more consistency just because I do think the circuit board is better designed and will give me more consistent throughput. Okay, so I've got the SSD in, enclosed and I've run some tests. Let's uh, basically I run the same test on these four different devices. Uh, this is the new, the new one from OWC. This is the fledging that I've been using, the one that's air cooled. Uh, this is the it's called a tech q cube which is what i showed earlier in the video same circuit board as that um, probably not quite as good of heat characteristics although the shell does act like a pretty good heat sink which is of course what loud sorry which is of course what the owc is uh, in doing and i've also got this usb one that i've got it called it's a made by sabrent and it's uh the newer higher speed uh, usb Originally, USB 3 was limited to about 500 megabytes a second. Now, as I do the video, what I really want to be pointing out is the claims that OWC makes. And let's analyze if it actually holds up to the claims and get a feel for where its speed is. I, what I found is it's definitely not the fastest option out there. Uh, and I believe what they're doing is to minimize the the change in throughput which seems to happen on all these others as you'll see in a minute this one stays very steady but it's at a slower speed so what i think they're doing is they're clocking it down somehow they're limiting the ability of the ssd so that controller chip doesn't overheat to the point that it has to slow down which is what happens on the other ones so this claims that it's 300 percent faster than the fastest usb3 option so if i have a 500 uh, megabyte per second USB 3 SSD, which is, um, I know I've got one here, which is this little sand disc one. That's how, that's actually, it measures like it, right, right at 488, really consistent. Now, they've got one that's twice as fast as this now. And so that claim's probably not going to hold water, um, but we'll see. It also says it's 50% 50, 50 faster than even the fastest Thunderbolt 3 compatible option. So what they're claiming to me is this is going to be 50% faster than my tech Q option or my fledging option. And I'm going to just to kind of give it away, they don't come close. And so let's take a look at the speed. First of all, we're going to look at how fast uh, this one is. So it's, remember, it's the same SSD. I've moved the SSD from each device. So it's the exact same chip. I'm not, it's not even uh, a different chip of the ex identical chip. It's the exact same chip. And if we take a look at the new USB Envoy Express, is that what they call it? Uh, as you can see, it gets to uh, a write speed of about 1,200 to 1,400 and a read speed of about 1,500. Now, I can let this run for a long time, and those speeds won't change. And that's one of the key differences between this and what I'm seeing in the other. But so ne next, let's take a look at my little uh, fledging case. And as you can see, it runs considerably faster. 
I'm getting write speeds of 800 or 1800 megabytes a second. So it's about 300 megabytes a second to 400 megabytes a second faster in the write speed. I'm getting 2500 megabytes a second in the read speed. And as you can see these two going back and forth, you can see how much faster the fledging is than a, the new one from uh, OWC. Let's just quickly take a look and put this same SSD in my uh, little uh, Thunderbolt or I mean, USB 3 case. This case is pretty cool because it's there's no tools needed to put it together. Have a video on that earlier in the playlist if you want to look. But here you can see that this gives me a very consistent 900 to about 1000 megabytes a second, both read and write. And that's actually pretty good. It's USB 3 isn't bad. And uh, this optimized version of it, it's very, very steady, very solid. And to be honest, I've tested Lightroom. I have a series of five tests I use with Lightroom, very standardized. I've run it on a whole bunch of Macs. And that's fast enough for Lightroom to really, you can't, any faster Lightroom doesn't get a lot of benefit. So now last of all, we're gonna test it in this TechQ cube. And as you can see, when I run this test, it runs about identical to the fledging, which is to be expected, it's the same circuit board. What I did notice is that eventually both the fledging and the TechQ, their speeds slow down a little bit. And I assume it's because that controller chip gets a little too hot and something it gets too hot so it has to throttle the speed back if you stop for a second and then you restart it it's pretty good from what i can tell i have to run about i have to you know if i these are doing basically mimicking four gigabyte file transfers and i have to run about eight or ten of those and then it'll slow down significantly maybe mostly in the read and then if i stop for just 15 20 seconds the speed's back so i think under normal usage you're going to get the max speed most of the time because you're just not writing these huge, huge files. Now, if you're doing a lot of video work, maybe you would. So I'm a little bit disappointed. First of all, their claims definitely don't hold water. My USB 3, um, it's not 3,000 megabytes per second, which would be 300% faster. It's about 30% faster from what I can figure. Uh, you know, you go from about 1,000 to about 14, 1,500. It's slower than these comparable options I have here and here. Uh, I'm gonna actually uh, contact their tech support because I'm not sure where their claim's coming from and how they legitimize it. And I'm just gonna say, look, I read your claim, that's why I bought it. And is my unit defective? Because if it's defective, I can understand it. But it seems to me, uh, I, I think maybe they're just making some claims that aren't valid. A little sad because I've, I've always thought OWC was really straightforward, a company of high integrity, and I don't know where they're coming up with these claims because I'm just kind of a normal Joe with a few devices, and I can show that the claims are not valid very, very quickly. It takes me, took me you know 10 minutes to run these tests. Anyway, it's still a great device. I'm still planning on using it. I like the size. I do like the fact that the cable's attached, knowing that if I wreck the cable, I can replace it because I've gotten to places where I've lost my cable. And so uh, the other device I have from them, I don't think I can replace the cable or do so easily. This one I know I can. So I actually like that. Um, I think it has a little bit better heat characteristics than my TechQ. And I also like that I'm, that TechQ with my uh, double-sided uh, chip, I know I'm having to, to flex it a tiny bit to get it in there. And that also, that means there's a lot of pressure from that heat tapes pushing down on that one component I showed it the earlier in the video. I don't have that problem with this one. So I think it's better for the SSD. For my main SSD, I'm gonna stick with the fledging. I know it's a little noisy, but I know that the cooling will make it uh, run a little more consistent. And it's, uh, I just feel like it's right now my best option. It is a little bigger. Uh, I might, could go with this one because I get the same performance, but uh, I think I'll stick with this for now. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video and get something out of it. Feel free to ask me questions. I'm not real good at answering questions. I, I'm you know, not around a lot and it's, uh, apologize. I will try to answer real simple ones that I can answer quickly. Um, I do like the device still. If you wanna buy one, uh, I think I can put a link from Amazon on these. I'll definitely put a link to Amazon to the fledging device because I still recommend it. And also to this uh, um, Sabrent uh, device, which is 
pretty good. It's a, it's a little less expensive. That's the main advantage is this is still a little pricey and it's, I'm not sure it's worth the extra money to get that extra speed because this is still really fast for an external drive. So anyway, hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel down there and hopefully uh, I've got a few more videos coming along. I'm trying to get my kind of my list of which ones to do organized. So anyway, till next time, see ya.